Hey, hey, thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Talks with Tony. Got an email, and this one is, you know, it's kind of lengthy, so, you know, uh, brace yourself. Say, hey, Tony, I'm from Atlanta. I wanted to submit a question. I will make it short and right to the point. It says short and right to the point, but this looks a little long. But I need some solution to my problem. Me and my children's dad has been officially separated for almost a year now. I left last year in May, packed up all my things after being fed up and left to move back to Atlanta, where we both used to live together. We have three kids, 12 year old, 10 year old and a six year old. We've been together since I was 15 years old. I'm 29. He's 30. The relationship has been rough. He says we are too toxic for each other. I say he holds a grudge against me when he left me the first time he dated a coworker at his job and they moved in together. I choose, I chose to move on and talking to another guy, but he held that against me and told me I should have been woman enough to stay to myself while he did his thing, trying to figure things out, which I felt was very deceitful and naive of him. Anyway, we got back together to try to work things out, move back home to Florida. For one year, things still didn't feel right. We both weren't happy. I wanted my family together more than anything. We were going to church and I didn't like the church and he wasn't listening to me, but that was the same church his father attended for years. So we split, I packed up, and left Florida. He wasn't treating me the way I felt a man should treat a woman at all. No love or happiness. I moved back to Atlanta. He stayed in Florida. Anyway, fast forward three months after the split, my kids go visit him and came back as normal. One day, my six year old son blurted out of nowhere. My daddy has a girlfriend. I didn't act out in front of him, but I did confront his dad and I asked him, was he in a new relationship? He couldn't give me a straightforward answer. He came down for Christmas last year and kept telling me he needed to talk to me. It was very important. I knew it was something about this new person in his life for him to confirm he was in a new relationship. We had our talk. He tries to beat around the bush. Then he finally comes out and says he's getting married this year. My heart physically dropped. I was heartbroken all over again. The pain didn't stop. I was in a dark place. Then I found out my kids have been around this woman several occasions without me knowing behind my back. My kids have seen them kiss, hold hands, show public affection, and he failed and he failed to tell them he was in a relationship. And he failed to tell me he was in a relationship. My kids assume that was his friend, which was untrue. Oh, he failed to tell them that he was in a relationship. I confronted him about that as well. He told me they have nothing that that has nothing to do with me. He has moved on. Fine. When I confronted him about it face to face about this woman again, because my kids kept telling me things, that kept going on in front of them. He told me that she is irrelevant to me, but you have our kids involved. How would you feel if I did that to you with a man that you didn't know anything about in front of our kids? Then he put God in the mix saying God told him and confirmed that that was his wife. Since then he has changed. He's been going to church and he's a new man now better than he was with me. So he says, although every time we talk, he throws a scripture at me like I am not saved. I found out through my oldest that she previously was married before and she has a son and she too is at this church, but he claimed he never knew her from the church. Now here's the kicker. He told me since he changed his life over his new ways in the church that He didn't know this woman at all. And she was a complete stranger that one day he was in his car and God says and God told him that she was his wife and to go inside the church revival and introduce yourself to your wife. 
To me, I am shocked. So he decided to do so. Been dating her for only three months and about to make her his wife in April. On his birthday, a date I will never forget. Very mischievous. He's been hiding her this whole time. Also, haven't been telling the whole truth to his family about how he came about this whole situation. People in the family don't know the whole truth, which is my side and the truth. He's trying to clear his conscience, make himself look innocent instead of deceitful in front of everyone before he says his I do's. All this was a shame from the beginning of his new relationship. Fast forward. That's what's going to happen. And I caught him in his lie before he did it. I text him recently stating that you're going to get married next month. And I don't know who this woman is. My kids met her on several occasions, but she's a complete stranger to me because every time I ask about her, he will tell me that she's irrelevant. The reason he says he does that because he wants me to heal. He even requested for me to delete all of our pictures we had together for all those years. And to me, that was completely disrespectful. So he is going to bring her up to Atlanta without me knowing I was going to pick up my kids and be blindsided, not knowing she was going to be as be there as well. He wants me to meet her with his family. Mind you, I am extremely close with his family. They became my family as well. Even after the breakup, I stopped him before he could have set me up because with everything built up, there's no telling what my reaction would have been walking into a surprise without me knowing anything about her coming. I asked him, when was he, when was he going to warn me? He never replied. I just caught him in his little plan that failed. Come to find out, I know who the woman is. She knows of me very well. She used to hug me in the church and used to have conversation with me and also used to be behind me during prayer. I feel so betrayed. And he kept saying, God chose this for him. God said not to restore your family. And we are not evenly yoked because we're too toxic for each other. All voices in his head because he's confident and God gave him clarity and not confusion. Now they're still coming up here next week because my kid's dad chose to do all of this the wrong way with secrets and lies. I don't know how to meet this new woman. I can't accept her. I don't know what to do if it's his fault since day one. Tony, I am at ends. I, I am at my wits ends with this situation. My hands are tied and I am hurt and angry. I am trying to heal. I read your book. I watch the Q&A daily. I watch lives and I listen and take notes. I also am a part of Patreon, including your virtual counseling once a month. My life is turned upside down. I haven't put him on child support and I feel as if our kids shouldn't go to this wedding. I don't want him forcing her on our kids. I am a single mom. I do my best, but I just can't take any more hurt or get another slap in the face. Lastly, I don't know how to meet her and how to act on both of them coming to visit, especially when the wedding is happening next month. Woo! Thank you to everyone who listen to listen, listen, listen. Now, this is from one of my patrons. So thank you so much for being a supporter. Thank you so much for, you know, investing in yourself the way you do. Thank you for reading. Make it work. You're getting the knowledge. That's that's half of the half of the battle. You're getting the knowledge. You know, you, you got up and you left when he wasn't treating you right. You moved back. You know, you moved away. You you walked away. You, you've been with him since you were 15. Um, you're 29 years old, so. You got with him. Um, he's 30, so he was 16. Y'all were kids. Now, see, here's the lesson. Y'all have three kids. Your oldest is 12. The next is 10. The next is six. So there's a lot of history here. 15 years of history. He is about to be 31. But see, here's what you have to understand. You have to wash your hands with it. 
You got to wash your hands with it. And I know that is easier said than done. But this is what you have to understand. And this is what you have to teach your kids. Don't start dating as a teenager. Don't start dating. Don't let your kids date at 15, 16 years old because the same thing that's happening to you can happen to them. You know why? Because a man really doesn't fully begin to know himself, an average man, until about the age of 25. A man who knows himself and knows what he wants and knows who he is and wants to be in a relationship and be 100% faithful before the age of 25 is very, very, very rare. It's very rare. Look what I'm doing today with my life and my purpose and, you know, trying to touch other lives with a level of maturity and consistency. And I didn't figure it out until 25 years old. So if you don't see me as an average man, which I know I'm not an average man, because if I was average, then every man would be doing what I'm doing or, or a whole lot more, at least thousands you know, but you you probably doing what I'm doing. You probably know as far as speaking on love and relationships, but also living it out in the public eye. You probably know five or less men like on a pub as a public figure. Uh, maybe in your community you see some, but I know that what I'm doing is not average. And I didn't figure it out till 25. So I say that to say a lot of men today really don't start to figure it out till 30, 35. You got with this guy when he was 15 years old, he didn't know anything. I mean, he was 16 years old, he didn't know anything. So who he was at 16, he's a totally different man at 31. You know, it's like at 16, taste is totally different. Like women I thought were the bomb.com when I was 15, now they can't hold a candle to my wife. You know, or or and yours could be the other way. He could have been really into you and you could have aged like fine wine and you could be amazing right now. But he's ran his course with you. He used and abused you. You say he didn't treat you right. He didn't treat you like you felt a woman should treat a man. Y'all were in a church and you didn't want to be in that church. He didn't listen to you. So he did not value you. He did not respect you. And the reason why is because it's too much history. See, what do they say? Familiarity breeds contempt. So the more he got to know you, the, more, the closer he got to you, the more comfortable he felt. So the more complacent he became. So he started to take you for granted and he kept you barefoot and pregnant. So you got three kids from this man. So now he knows he has you up a creek without a paddle because he understands that it's not easy for a man to love a woman and her kids. It's not easy for a man to love a woman and one child. You have three children, so he knows that it's going to be a special man. But he also knows that special men are not growing on trees. So he knows it could be some, you know, some time. Or he knows that if you don't heal, you could stay single and broken and he won't have to deal with his kids calling another man dad, but he doesn't care about you enough to not make his kids deal with another woman calling her mom or stepmom or loving her like a mom and them having to choose who's better, my mom or my stepmom. Who do I appreciate the most for you know being with my dad or loving my dad? So he's not thinking about that. And you said in here, you left him at one point and or, or y'all broke up. Uh, the relationship was toxic when he left you. He left you the first time and he dated a co-worker at his job and they moved in together. And then you chose to move on and talking to another guy. And he held that against you and told you that you should have been woman enough to stay to yourself while he did his thing trying to figure things out. Now he needs to be slapped with no baby powder. He needs to be slapped front hand and back hand. How are you going to leave a woman and then tell her she should have stayed still while you go out with the dirty D figuring things out and then you come back to this woman, but you expect her to sit there like a bump on a log waiting on you. Man, if you don't shut that mess up and the fact that you did that, 
the fact that you did that, you sorry. And the fact that you got three kids with this woman and you're not trying to make it work, you sorry. So yes, sister, he probably has grown. He probably has changed, but he's still sorry. And I, and I don't appreciate that because when, when you lay down and you do what it takes to bring kids into the world, it's not about you. It's not about you. It's about them kids and providing a happy, healthy household. So when you bring that many kids into the world, if your woman is willing to try to make this thing work, you need to make it work. Not a thing about it now, sister, is you said that you left. You know, you said it's not going to work. It's too toxic. You leaving. He's saying it's too toxic. So it's over. So what you have to realize now is that he's going to move on. He's going to move on and it's going to hurt you. You say your heart dropped. You put it in all. You say my heart physically dropped and I could see it in the email easy, even though this email uh, 50 million minutes long because you wrote that in all caps. And I know it hurts because you got a soul tie. You got multiple soul ties. You got three kids with him. You tied to him for life. Every time you look at them, you got to think about him and you got, you're going to deal with your kids your entire life. So when you're dealing with your kids, you're dealing with him, whether he's there or not. And then you know that they got to go be up under this woman. And then you know the woman, the woman saw you, the woman saw your weakness. He used you, but guess what? He used you to look like a committed, faithful man. And to make him look like a good man to this woman, this woman probably most likely got a good job. I don't know if she a lawyer. I don't know if she own her own company or, you know, she most likely got a good job and looked like she could bring something to his life, some form of stability or some form of increase. And so it's something here because most men, you got three kids with a woman. You're going to try to make that thing work out for the sake of your kids, you know, it, it at the least. And so. It's something this woman bringing to the table that he values over what you bring to the table. And that's why he's moving so fast with her. He's been with her three months and he's talking about marrying her. It, he's playing her. He's playing her. He's using her. She does not know it. She's desperate, dumb and naive because she watched him be with you in church and she and she prayed with you, stood behind you in prayer, hugged you. Know y'all got three kids and now she getting with him. You got an email, you got a phone number, send her this episode. Uh, sister, that you about to get the rebound, man, you acting like a fool. You acting like a slap fool. This man ain't worth the donkey he rode in on. This man ain't worth the lint in his pocket. This man finna leave this woman he done been with for 15 years, stringing her along. He done left her one time, moved in with his co-worker. He got the happy D, he got the dirty D, and now he putting his dirty D in you, and y'all going to the church, all up in church, praying and living in all this sin. If God go to striking people, y'all going to be on the top of the list because you prayed with this woman, and now you finna be with a man. Is you crazy? Are you crazy? Have you fell and bumped your head? It's too many men out here for you to be getting with a man who got... A woman he drew up for 15 years and got and gave her three kids. And then you meet the man in church after you done prayed with his ex. And now you finna be with a woman. You slap crazy. And man, you slap dumb and you are a low life. You if you talking about God and you done change your life, then let God renew your heart to become a real man to make it work with the woman you put three kids in. How you put three kids in a woman and talking about she's not the one for you. Y'all too toxic. You know why she too toxic? Because you cheat on her. Because you cheat on her and you dog her out. What? How you think somebody going to be healthy if you cheating on them and dogging them out? Of course it's going to be toxic. But if you heal, if you ask for forgiveness, if you try to help heal her heart, then she wouldn't be toxic. So sister who wrote this in, listen, I done talked to his new wife. I done talked to him the date you put in here i didn't say the date i just didn't want to be too specific but we coming up on or oh, that date and already passed by the time this posted so if they went through with it uh they married and uh so you only have one choice and that's to move on that's to move on with your life to heal to forgive you say he throws scripture at you like you're not saved well if you saved, then talk to god Talk to God, really build a relationship, a prayer life, ask for strength 
ask for wisdom, ask for clarity, ask for a healed heart, ask for the strength to forgive him and to forget him. And then when it comes to your kids, you don't want her to be forced on your kids, but it don't sound like your kids complaining about her. They're not saying, mama, she pinching my ear. Mama, she slapping me when daddy ain't looking. Mama, she don't feed me. Mama, she won't let me eat. Your kid's not in harm. They're not in danger. The, the woman, although she naive, she in church, she trying to do right. Although, you know, she, she, she desperate right now. If she ain't dogging your kids out and your oldest is 12, and your next is 10, your youngest is six. All of them can express themselves. So if anything, any funny business go to happen, you just keep an open line of communication. And you just let them know, like, look, is she nice? Do you like her? If she ever curse at you, if she ever yell at you, if she ever won't give you any food or what have you, let me know. If your kids are not in danger and he has a right to those kids, then there's nothing you can do. You have to, you can try to keep them away if, if just, you know, out of your bitterness and your anger. But then you hurting them if he's a good father to them. He's setting a bad example for them, but he has to answer for that bad example. When they are of age, maybe even 13, 15, definitely 18, he gonna have some questions that he has to answer. So he's going to reap what he has sown. You got to pray for mercy that it don't kill him so that your children can have their father on the face of this earth. And you got to heal and you got to forgive and you got to move forward. You got to heal your heart and you will attract real love and you will be able to start over and you will be able to build. Whether it's now or whether it is 12 years from now, 12 years from now, you will be 42 years old. You still will be a baby. You still will be young. You'll have plenty of time. 12 years from now, your youngest will be on his way or her way to college. So focus on your children and be the absolute best mama. Don't worry about dating. And if you do date, definitely keep your legs closed so you don't work on the number four child and focus on your children. Love them and be the best you can be so that when they look at you and they look at stepmama, it, she can't hold a candle to you. That she like a candle in the sunshine when they compare the two of y'all because you so focused, you so committed, you so all in. But if you bitter and you spiteful and you hateful, you're going to be half of a woman for your children. And that woman, she trying to replace you. She going to be putting 150 percent her best foot forward. And your kids will end up thinking the stepmama better than you. So heal and operate from love. God bless you. I'm praying for you. You definitely will need it. But I know you're strong enough. God bless you. We'll talk soon. Hey, if you have a question for me, please send it in to inbox at TonyGaskins.com. Inbox at TonyGaskins.com. That was from another one of my patrons. Make sure on YouTube you check it out. Patreon.com forward slash Tony Gaskins. Patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Providing exclusive content, monthly calls. Um, and I really appreciate your support because it's helping me create this content. This content is not free. I got a very great audio engineer and video and editor, uh, Renaissance utility man who charges a pretty penny and he has worked everything and I want to be able to even elevate it with him. So I appreciate your support on Patreon because you are making this happen. So thank you so much. God bless you. We'll talk soon.